Hello, today's Friday, June 28th, and today we're talking about robots and nonsense. Our they two favorite sections. Together. They do, usually. Robots and artificial intelligence, because that is a robot, right? I guess, sure. Yes, I'm deciding right now mm -hmm. as the head Post. of the Robot Council. And when we talk about artificial intelligence, the big name right now, what is it, Krista? Yes, that's right, it's deep fakes. I was going to guess uh, that I've suddenly lost at Boston. Oh, the Boston Dynamics. Yeah, oh, that's, also, their dogs. A, oh, that's who also, I always think also of. Also a valid guess, but then I, I alluded to the AI part. Uh, <laughs> Boston Dynamics plus Google's AI engine. It's literally Skynet. So we remember the Mark Zuckerberg deepfake we talked about. The one thing about the Mark Zuckerberg deepfake is the voice was not quite there, right? The voice was not robotic enough. It's hard to capture his cadence. So, <laughs> how do you deal with that? There's a solution. A new deep fake algorithm allows you to text edit the words of a speaker in a video. So yes, that's right. The software has gotten so good that you can just, it's like, here's a, you know, here's a transcript of what somebody said. Change it however you want. It's like, cool. And I'll, then it just handles it. There's a catch. It requires, I can't remember, was it 40 minutes or 40 hours? It, it requires a lot of yeah. data. I think it was, I don't, uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So you're not always going to have 40 minutes of good training video. Now for a public figure. More is better. A public figure, you're going to have no problem with that, right? Although if you get them in different videos from different angles, you might have a problem. Yeah, for us, that would be, you, people would have no problem doing that to us, right? Oh, I, yeah. I didn't want to go there, but now, <laughs> now we're there. So. We're there. Yeah, we're not important enough for people to do that. No, no one cares. We should be happy if, if anybody deep fakes us, because it means somebody cares. But yeah, uh, so if you want to change speech, then you just you train it, and you edit text. That's all it takes. You want to subvert an election? Text editor. I was going to say, like, how long before people, like, main, mainstream normies pick up on the possibilities of this and how many people will have their careers ruined because of deep fake video. Oh, we're just gets released. We're we're at like sea level of deep fakes and then and we're heading toward Kilimanjaro type yeah. disruption. It's gonna be amazing. Interesting times as they say. Photoshop's Krista. Mm hmm An expert like you can sometimes tell because of the pixels. Because of the pixels. But you're no longer needed. <laughs> Not for this. Adobe's experimental AI tool can tell if something's been photoshopped. You can tell by some of the pixels? It can tell by some of the... I, I imagine, too, I wonder if it, it can tell filters, like for Instagram and stuff. I guess that wouldn't be too hard. Well, it... Probably the similar principle. It looks for, you know, the distortions. Mm -hmm. And because it's built by Adobe, it knows how certain things are applied. So it also looks for those patterns. So did somebody just shop her jawline there? Because I'm having a hard time seeing yeah. the difference. She no, made her jawline thinner. Look at her. Look at her lips. Like she's kind of smiling here, and then she's more because they've shaped it. Oh, I guess that's so subtle. And then oh, yeah, clients ask for that all the time. And then they took this, messed with this. I think they smoothed it because it's a little more masculine over here, and here it's rounded. Mm. Oh, they can't see that. Oops. <laughs> yeah and then you know I, it's easy I, I can see how the AI could tell in this picture because all these colors are on there. <laughs> <laughs> that one's really oh, well and the circles help too how, I, that's uh, that's actually probably going to be a thing because we talk about like the adversarial AI like you put the holographic sticker with the banana one of the next features of neural nets is going to be or the software is going to be alright AI walk me through how you deduce that and it's like here pleb human have these colored overlays so yeah. that I can well, that's the other thing. It can undo it in some cases. Not 100%, but good enough to kind of show you what the original might look like. How do we know that this thing works? Well, they took experts like Krista, and they showed them the pixels. Their success rate, 54%. Basically a coin flip, right? AI success rate, 99. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. Bad news for the Instagram thoughts. Good well, they news. mostly use filters. Some of them do Photoshop, though. Good actually, news for the orbiters. Actually, it could be good news in a way for the Twitch thoughts because they can have real time video, like a video feed editing thing where it's just like like fixing everything, like de aging them. Oh, and... I was thinking Instagram, but. Oh, yeah. Because okay. then that's just photos. It's easier. Yeah, but are you going to. If you're an orbiter, you're a beta male who wants to give them money, 
Are you going to run the picks through this thing first to make sure it's real? Because <laughs> that's if, what you want out of that relationship. Real. What, what if you're a beta male that's just the most amazing gifted programmer and like you start giving them these tools to, and then it just sort of spirals out of control? They're still never going to acknowledge you. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you do. Right. Well, we looked at the... Uh, but will you remember? We looked at the headline for this story, and I remember making the comment, there's no way that's real. Yeah, we were like, uh, this may be a nothing burger, but it's not. <laughs> it's kind of real. Upgrade your memory with a surgically implanted chip. Now, before you get super excited, this is mainly the army for people with traumatic brain injuries. And you have to be epileptic and already have a sensor in your brain to do this. And it's really precise what they do. Whenever they detect that you're searching for a memory, they blast electricity into your brain. That's how this thing works. But it does work. Super precision. It works. Uh, the percentages were not crazy. That was like 14% in one test and what, 37 or something in another one. But, oh, and the way they test this thing is they just gave people lists to memorize. And then while they were trying to conjure them, blast them with some electricity. <laughs> and it kind of worked. The idea is that's going to give it that extra power to form new pathways. Appears to be working. Why not? I imagine, you know, like if you refine this 10 years from now, would you get the implant? Yes. If it was like 90% increase? Oh, yeah. No no question. I would probably just get the for, implant for like 10% increase. Just for memory? Yeah, probably. I don't know if I would. It probably Depends. won't cause brain cancer later. Yeah. What if it? What if you remember just all the bad stuff? Oh, that would be bad. <laughs> that Suddenly would, those night terrors really kick up. <laughs> the best thing about night terrors is not being able to remember them after an hour or two. So mm -hmm. <laughs> It makes perfect dream recall. <laughs> but you just have the worst, most horrific dreams. It's going to be like those guys we were learning about from Facebook on the last episode. It's just like, no. Oh. <laughs> just, you just dream of killing lizards yeah. all night long. No. Oh. Tesla has announced a truck. <laughs> oh, wait. And people are excited. And I think people are arguably more excited about this one. <laughs> Simone Yetch has transformed a Tesla Model 3 into a pickup. You've probably all seen this. This has been all over YouTube. Even if you're not like... Even if you're not on YouTube that much, it's on the front page. It was trending forever. This, the cinematography on this video is just incredible. Like, they just think on a different level in, out there well, in Hollywood or wherever. Well, when you have enough money to not only film the video, but also take apart a Tesla for funsies, it's a little easier to hire but, a nice cinematographer. But here's the thing. And I hate to be the, uh, the, the downer, <laughs> the Debbie downer. But that, that car, look how low it sits. Yeah. A lot of people pointed out that it would probably be almost completely non-functional. And then when you load down, if you put some gravel in the back of that thing, is the suspension really beefed up to handle a load? Yeah, you're going to be dragging the ass of that Tesla all over the trail. Even, it's not road legal either, I don't think. <laughs> it's a pure PR stunt. Four bags of cement and you're done. But hey, <laughs> we got a charismatic girl who's had brain surgery, so... Gotta upvote that. Can't, say Can't that not upvote that. Yeah. She could literally just be like, "Look, I put a screw or a spoon on the end of an electric drill." It's like upvote. Good That's, for you. It is kind of true. But it is really awesome. It's like, how do you go from how do you go from a spoon and an electric drill to that? I mean, that's pretty amazing. Now they did point out that uh, the Tesla once they started cutting away that back end, the the rear, it was not structurally sound. At all. So, if you're thinking about doing this yourself, just <laughs> don't do it. Beware. <laughs> or at least go to a body shop that can do something to fix it. If she gets hit from the back, I mean, that's yeah. Like, that's just going to crumple up like thin tin. Yeah, well, unless they've welded something in for that. They did. They added it. But still, something tells me that rack they had in the back would just become like, you know, mm -hmm. death projectiles. <laughs> is, that, is, that a, is that a roll cage? Like, can we get that roll cage certified? No. That's uh, Elon Musk will personally have you killed. <laughs> We've talked about Flippy. Flippy was one of everybody's favorite robots, right? The burger flipping robot. And uh, there was the one that made salads. There was the one that made uh, fried, stir fry type foods. A lot of kitchen robots. That seems to be one of the big things that people think like, hmm, what kind of robot should I make? We'll make one cook. I, mean, I hate cooking. The Perfect. worst part about cooking, Krista. Is the cleanup. 
Robotic dishwasher saves restaurants from drudgery. So I, I didn't really understand this story 100% because it's, it's a robotic dishwasher, but don't we already have dishwashers? Like, wasn't that one of the first inventions? Like, I'm pretty sure even the school cafeteria had some sort of robotic machine where yes. you would load trays of dishes and then it would, I could hear them violently Clanking, shuffling about yeah. inside the machine and it's just and then the, that came out clean on the other side. The difference here is uh, this dishwasher is actually observing the dishes after it's done. Mm. Make sure so, they're actually clean. Right, yeah. And it's it has sort of like a, a magazine or a cassette that you load and take in and out of it. So imagine you could have a bunch of those. Isn't and, that like a regular dishwasher with more steps? Yeah, I mean, it's a scaled up dishwasher. Okay. Well, it's not, I'm not arguing that. <laughs> but your dishwasher, I mean, I'm sure everybody has the experience. You put something in the dishwasher and you should have rinsed it and you didn't. And you get it out. And whatever that was is just now it's like carbonized onto your <laughs> plate. The, and no amount of say. scraping will get rid of it. The bigger question is, would you buy your McDonald's from a Terminator? And I think the answer is yes. Oh, my God, I don't care who sells it to me. <laughs> you know, as long as they're clean. Unless they got uh, earlob spacers, I'm done. I'm just <laughs> Ryan's skipping really not about those. Well, if the entire kitchen staff were, you know, like Terminator-style robots, they could literally just... You know, bake everything at 400 degrees at the end of the shift, and it would disinfect literally everything. Just, just flame that whole thing, and just, just nothing like, would survive. Just like Crispy. Get it? Was bake, that a drug reference? Bake everything. Oh. Bodie yeah. McBoatface. <laughs> Everybody had a good laugh about Bodie McBoatface. It definitely wasn't overexposed, but we forgot about it, and yet it's out there. It's doing things. And it's a robot. And telling us horrible, horrible things. Bodie McBoatface makes a significant climate change discovery on its first mission. The very first mission of Bodie McBoatface. So, of course, we this is the boat named by the internet, by an internet poll. You know, let's name the boat via an internet poll. What could go wrong? Bodie McBoatface. Well, they wanted to name the actual boat that was carrying him that, and they changed it to being named after Attenborough. So then they're like, well, we'll call the sub Bodie McBoatface. What it discovered, <laughs> and hold your breath here, it discovered that the water is a different temperature when you go down in the depths. And when the wind blows, sometimes the warm water gets mixed in with the cold water. So shocking. The cold water is warmer than expected. Global warming, we're all going to die. That's the conclusion, right? Oh wait, no, I'm 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 filling in some gaps there. Yes. Literally, what it's telling us is if we don't vote for Joe Biden, everybody gets cancer. <laughs> That's a bit of a leap. No, that's... Have you seen The View? <laughs> We've talked about some robotic fish here on the Level 1 News. And uh, some of them were really impressive. Some of them could swim really fast. They had different kinds of propulsion. This one is none of those things. This robotic fish is powered by electronic blood. It can swim for 36 hours. How fast can it swim? Very slow. 1.5... Lengths of the fish that's you know the from it can swim that far and then another half in a minute. Well, look how cute he is. <laughs> that's all he is. So he's not even going to fight against the current, is what you're saying. He's not going to do anything. But look at him go. Don't you yeah. shit on him. Look at him barely go. <laughs> <laughs> look at it. It's uh. imperceptible. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Why would He's you great make, fish Shut up. if you know your fish is that slow why would you make the video five seconds long because he, he makes yeah. no forward motion <laughs> three days but it can run for three days they think well, at that they speed have, yeah they haven't actually they haven't that. tested it for three days yet but i don't know okay three days later what is it it's going to be 20 yards yeah what? in perfectly still water so it's basically going where the current takes it i don't know the Revolutionary thing about it, I think, is the way that it moves, which is it flips its little tail with... Uh, it is watertight silicone whatever, which is interesting. Yeah, and well, the way the the robot blood, as they call it, is uh, some sort of, I guess, hydraulic function. Anyway, you go read about it. It's a, it's a robot fish. Just read the article. Don't listen to us. The video game industry, now, I, I don't think we've covered any of it, but there's been a lot of backlash against crunch in the video game world. 
Yes. We found out that uh, GTA, for example, is basically just like every bite, there's an ounce of human blood that corresponds to <laughs> creating that. <laughs> so uh, Nintendo actually recently pushed a game back because they were like, okay, we get it. We're not going to... It's do, not ready. We're not going to do the crunch. We're not going to abuse our employees. So you have to wait another half a year for the game. And people were like, no, we don't want to wait. <laughs> really? I saw like, people praising that. No, like, no, no, I'd no, rather be ready when it's ready. It was probably 50-50. And uh, so when something like that gets a lot of news, what happens? U.S. presidential candidate Bernie Sanders supports video game workers unions. Oh, come on, Bernie. Come on. Are you feeling the burn? <sighs> Do you feel the it? young kids love the video games, Bernie. Like, <laughs> I hear you. Are you going to feel the burn if you have to wait till 2021 for Cyberpunk? <laughs> I uh, you know, not put back that far, or is it 2020? Well, it will be when Bernie takes over. Uh, the other thing that's not unionized, which is very surprising, is the visual effects industry, which has kind of some overlap for in the the gaming industry in terms of like some of the programming and visual effects and that kind yeah, of thing. Sure, yeah. Now, I, I don't know, though, like, because the game companies are so different, and so many video com yeah. game companies are so small. Yeah. It's like two guys in their basement. Yeah. A lot of people chasing the dream. Of course, you know, was it EA? They laid off a bunch of people, and one of the programmers was like, wow, they paid Ninja more in two hours than I make in a year, and they laid me off. That's got to sting a little bit. You ever did that so, so more games? Did his labor, yeah. Did it sell enough games to retain that programmer? Also, who worked on the thing? If you are fighting to get the programmers paid, are you not cutting that off on the other end by doing the loot box nonsense? Are yeah. they are the programmers benefiting from the loot boxes? Is it reasonable to expect a game company to be able to make, you know, seventeen thousand percent profit? I don't know. Maybe people should stop buying video games from horrible companies. Maybe that would do something. It does feel a lot better buying indie games. Maybe if Cyberpunk wasn't like number one on the Steam list when it's not even out. For like a year. That's the problem. Isn't it coming out for like a year? It's like it's, a year it's away. It's a while. April, yeah. yeah. That's almost a year. Yeah. That's crazy. That's the problem. If a you lot get hyped about wrong. something like that when you don't know hardly anything about it. But yeah. Keanu. But, you know, the thing about You're it beautiful. is no one's ever experienced that before. So they have to get burned. Oh, no. No Man's Sky. <laughs> uh, no Man's Sky was disappointing. I've heard it's better now, but I haven't revisited it. People were so excited for that. Our fans bought us a copy of that. And then they were like, oh, my um, God. They were, yeah, he was like, I'm sorry. I just shouldn't have done this. He spent like, a, oh, like 120. We love you. Yeah, three, three, thank you. I think he bought himself one too. Yeah, he yeah. got a refund on that one. Like, oh, so disappointing. <laughs> we talked about the uh, the amazing research coming out of China. China produced all this research and was like, look at these amazing things we've discovered about the human liver. But then some people asked some questions <laughs> like, hey, China, how did you get all these livers? Where did they come from? And China Don't was like, shut that. up. <laughs> China is harvesting organs from detainees, a tribunal has concluded. And levity aside, I can't help but notice certain parallels between this and the video game industry. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think being organ harvested is a little, a little bit worse different than, than having, time. having to work an 80-hour week. <laughs> but yeah, so the Falun Gong, which is uh, I think like an anti-communist type Well, it's of, a religious. That's the... Uh, well, that's the other one, right? The Muslim. But it's, no, Falun Gong, I think, started as a religious movement. And they thought when it got too big, it, it opposed the communist ideologies. The, but they also have that uh, Muslim minority who are being targeted here. And Christians and, yeah. So Tibetans and you go now, we don't know this for sure, but a lot of people in power and a lot of doctors are saying, oh, yeah, this is happening. Now, they did have a girl who was imprisoned in China. And she talked about some very weird things that happened to her, yeah. like weekly blood tests. <laughs> Which she told them she had hepatitis, and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't control. think she did. That was very smart. Yeah. But not only that, being rounded up and given x-rays and MRIs. Hmm. It's like, why would a prison do that? That's expensive, <laughs> right? Huh. So, yeah. Between this and the liver data, 
A lot of livers. Doesn't look good. Kidneys too. The, the article mentions st- something about kidneys. You only need one of those to live, so you can just take one. And yeah, I don't. Pop them back I don't out. think they just get one organ from you yeah. when they organ harvest. I think they take. You them get all. everything. Yeah. Wow. That's uh. What a great deal for the person who needs the organs. You use every piece of the cow, Krista. Oh. Technology companies are in the crosshairs, and they know it, and they're you can smell the fear. And you can also notice it when they say weird stuff like this. Tim Cook says the tech companies need to take responsibility for the chaos they create. Now, of course, this is maneuvering. He is I don't pandering's probably not the right word. Well, but he said it at the Stanford graduation ceremony, so he's talking about Facebook and social media companies, like all oh, these social media companies are creating chaos. But he also had a reference to um there was a couple other things that he had a reference to uh uh, I've forgotten. You need the memory chip. I need the memory chip, yeah. Uh, but it's a little bit disingenuous because, you know, Apple is doing a lot of things that are not super ethical either. It's just what? different ways. Are you sure we're talking about the same Apple? <laughs> they stood up for, you know, uh, citizens' rights against warrantless seizure because it was in their business. Like, everything their must be aligned interests. in their business interests. I bet they've got a rainbow-colored Apple on their website right now, and that makes up for everything. <laughs> uh, Tim Cook is using this opportunity to try to destabilize some of the control that I think that uh, Facebook and Google have of people and their data because Apple wants to be the Google or the Facebook in terms of control of user data. And it's not right now. And it's not on track to be that. It's, uh, they're actually losing on every front, right? I mean, yeah. there's, well, only so, log in. there's only so many $5,000 computers you can sell. You, so. know, you know how you could get, rein in the chaos? Control. Even more control. The Apple walled garden. Even more control of devices. No device mm-hmm. upgradability. $6,000 Mac Pros. Control. I would say the best way to rein in chaos is to hunt down Xenos and heretics. <laughs> <laughs> Got a smart TV? Bet you feel smart about that, right? <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't. In a tweet, Samsung recommends scanning its QLED TVs for viruses. And so these internet connected viruses, it turns out they may be horribly infected. The weird, weird thing about this is they have this hidden in like five menus deep. Yeah. yeah. But they do have built-in malware scans. How often do you think they update their... Uh, the, the most recent OS has malware scans, probably because the older OSs were getting malware. But they're virus okay. dictionaries. How often do you think those get updated for TVs? Not very often. So They have... Why does my TV have... Like, What sort of dystopian future are we living in? My TV's mining Bitcoin. Yeah, they have these bespoke operating systems and browsers and stuff like that so they're probably not very well secured a lot of people figure that out bad times can you imagine a future where like you know all of the all of the computational resources of planet earth today lives in a device like a television and it's like hey tv i want to watch some netflix and it's like no i'm sorry the u.s cyber command has co-opted me into attacking the russian power grid you're just gonna have to wait on your netflix and it's like oh Okay, thanks, TV. I guess I'll just watch a DVD then. <laughs> no. An old school DVD. DVDs will not be legal. Everything will They're, be a service. Uh, that would be bad them. for me because yeah. I have quite the collection. No, no. You cannot own copyright material as a citizen. You lease it on a you know per view basis. Oh, of course. From the, the <laughs> Drink overlord, verification. Yeah. The cloud. <laughs> Everybody gets the chip implant in their brainstem so that it knows when they're viewing copyrighted material. There is no way to escape the system. Oh, Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat has powerful filters. And you think to yourself, man, that's just a gimmick. Well, I beg to differ. I don't know. You want to do this one? A male student uses Snapchat's gender filter to pose as an underage girl online and allegedly caught a cop. Look at this. So this story. They a, have the, the gender swap. It's so good. This story is a little weird. Like, this male student is just like, I'm going to catch a predator today. And it just so happened it was a cop. Like, that's literally that's the whole story. He did it. Yeah. Yeah, he thanks. did it, Reddit. Snapchat's gender filter for the win? It is actually surprisingly good. The only thing with, like, if you're a guy doing the girl filter, your hair, like, the hair is not very good. But he cropped it in such a way here that you can't really tell. I, I want to make a joke about that one guy being so jealous, but I can't think of his name. Chris, the catch a predator guy. 
Hanson. Yeah, uh, the joke, the moment's passed. Oh, I can't believe I remembered that. Why would you take that away from me? Here he is. Here's the guy. He's uh, he's in county lockup on a fifty thousand dollar bond. He so they got the chat here, which they seem to have printed and photocopied. Yeah, <laughs> but he says, "Wait, you're only 16." It's like, is that a problem? It's like, yeah, it might be a problem. Spoiler alert: It, it wasn't, wasn't a problem. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Not for him at the time. <laughs> Oops. Oh, bad news. Here's the thing about it. I am staunchly opposed to the drug war. I think, you know, you have the right to do whatever you want. And I know that Krista agrees with me. <laughs> but, Krista, when you enjoy drugs in your home, it's not okay to give them to your pets. <laughs> Never. Uh, squirrel? Squirrel? Squirrel attacks police officers after being fed meth. Now, was this in Florida? I, went, I don't remember. I read this and it was like, Nebraska. this really happened. And then it's like, maybe the squirrel, like this is an excuse for them subduing the squirrel. No, I, I could see someone being dumb enough to do this. Alabama. Oh, it's Alabama. Alabama. Oh, man. oh they're Alabama taking the heat off just, Kentucky. God, so many hits from Alabama. <laughs> now, here's the thing about it. I don't know if you guys read this all the way through. What is the protocol for dealing with a meth addicted squirrel? Animal control? Release it into the wild. Oh, no. <laughs> they just set it loose. <laughs> well, it's illegal to have a pet squirrel in Alabama, I guess. So, But surely you could take it to like a wildlife refuge where it could at least have like, you know, 48 hours to detox before being <laughs> released back into the wild uh, all paranoid. Vet observes yeah. something. That's, that's got to be a roller coaster ride. Can, can you imagine the stories he's telling the other squirrels? And they're like, Bob, that's bullshit. You didn't do any of that. I was trapped in this metal cage and there was this monster there. And then I got, I felt really good for a little while. Then I felt really bad. <laughs> oh, we hear a lot about uh, Google causing people to turn into rivers and, you know, go down streets that don't exist. And Google Maps. Stuff like that. Turn and, right off a cliff. But it's almost never an immediate threat to your life when you make one of those decisions. <laughs> Survivor's story, a floating log saved him after Google Maps said, take the sea shortcut. So, this is so I, stupid. I wanted to figure out where this is, but this guy, Google Maps was like, hey, if you swim across this channel, that's a shortcut. And it legit was a shortcut, but, but he got sucked into a riptide. But in, in what world, when you're like saying, if you're even just using walking directions, and you say, it says, hey, cut across this and swim, it's like, no, I think I'm just going to take the bridge that's like a mile up. Well, like, no, no. Well, Here's the thing. They explain that. So this guy was traveling with his brother, and they had some sort of conflict. And the brother just put him out of the car. So he was 80 kilometers from his home. The shortcut took 25 kilometers off of that trip. He was going to have to walk all the way around the body of water. So he was like, yeah, here we go. When do you say you wanted to figure out where this is? It was obviously in a... Poitiki yeah. and Cabral. Yeah. It's like, and the Bay of Plenty. So I think that if that had been here in the U.S., Google would have just been like, nah, man, don't try it. And he took a selfie, though. Look, there, there he Turns is. Turns out his water. iPhone's waterproof. Also, this Which is, saved his life. This is Otago. It's Cove NZ, so it's, I guess New Zealand. Somewhere uh, in the Pacific. This guy, this is the best thing about this story, is it's a commercial for Apple. Because that iPhone was in his pocket the entire time. Yeah. And stayed watertight. And he, yeah, for he like actually called hours. for help. After three, like, can you imagine after three hours being like, I guess I need help. Well, he found the log. And he was like, all right, I'm just going to keep going with this log. And then when he lost all sight of land, he was like, oh, I think I should admit that I've, I've failed. <laughs> this was maybe a mistake. Which shows <laughs> oh, no. maybe the, the, the mental fortitude of these island people. Whereas, like, your average American. It's just like, nope. They, they would stick one foot in the water and be like, this is cold. 911. <laughs> or... Why not just walk around? It's like you're in Jersey, and it's like the fastest way to New York is to swim that way. <laughs> Christy, you didn't read this article because he was literally... No, no, no. But, like, I understand that. But it's still, like, why would you not... Just just walk it. Like, you don't know. Is you Uber can make that thing? swim. He yeah, slept, or call a taxi, or, yeah. He slept on a beach and ate a dead fish that he stole from seagulls that were eating it on the beach. <laughs> he was a desperate man. Call an Uber? Well, he's, he's eating trash out of the like. I don't. He might not have had the money for it. He was all, all the same. Just walk it. He was rescued by a uh, random jet skier. Yeah. Mm. Nice. 
Instagram influencing. That is the hot new thing. And it seems like, like how many major Instagram influencers are there? Because every week a new one pops up. I don't think there's really that many. Like I couldn't name one, but I just see them everywhere. Well, these guys are apparently, you know, benefit. I don't know if it funds their entire lifestyle, but they don't work. Well, they they also mentioned in this article that the mom's working two jobs to support them. Instagram couple slim for asking people to fund a cycling trip. Now, for whatever reason, the New York Post doesn't have any pictures of these people. The Instagram feed didn't work. And about it the is very important that you see them. I didn't realize. Just take a look at this fellow here. How do you feel about that? He's got a lot of face tattoos. And it's funny because like his look screams gang member, but when you actually read the tattoos, most of them are actually yeah, kind of nice. Well, like, it's, it's like that uh, housewife decorator stuff, like live, laugh, love is the kind of yeah. stuff he's got, which is weird. So this fellow and his girlfriend, let's find a picture with her in it. Oh, here they go. These two wanted to take a tandem bicycle ride. How romantic is that, Krista? Oh, it would not be very romantic. Having tandem kayak with my fiance. Not romantic. <laughs> it was fun, but we well, let's just say we have a disagreement about how fast the kayak should be moving. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, so these two have decided to, they wanted they're in Germany. They wanted to tandem bicycle to Africa. They figure that's going to cost about eleven grand U.S. Well, and obviously, you just go on Instagram. That's what they said. Oh, GoFundMe actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, they want the GoFundMe, and they say, hey. Why don't you go with us, they're saying. No, not physically. Don't actually come with us. That would <laughs> no. be weird when we're like making out yeah. in the middle of the desert. We'll take some pictures and video and post it so you, sitting in your cubicle, can vicariously enjoy our carefree lifestyles where we don't work and get our faces tattooed. This is sounding dangerously close to reality for us. Yeah, I was going to say, don't <laughs> don't think about the parallel there. Patreon.com slash level one. There's no tandem bicycling going on here. <laughs> Yet. If that's something the patrons want, we'll do it. Now, if you haven't already seen the comments here, people didn't take well to it. No. No, not at all. And there's some hilarious reading if you want to check out this Instagram. (laughs) The people, uh, like Krista said, in defense of themselves, they were like, hey, my mom's going to pay for most of it, so you shouldn't be complaining. The mom Mm. apparently works two jobs, and they're like, she's really struggling right now. I'm sure she is. It's like, That's a ugh. problem. I'm sure, well, you know, it's it's Germany, so she doesn't have this option. But if it weren't a, you know, freedom-restricting socialist country, I'm sure she would come home every day and stare at a pistol and be like, <laughs> should I? I mean, I'm kind of trapped here with two useless children. Anyway, just another point of... Uh, it really is the definition of a nonsense story. <laughs> yeah, you're right. If, I mean, if you're gonna, it can't it. really be that. Let me peel back the linoleum. Oh, oh no, it's worse. They're gonna take a 30 day break from social media and rethink some things, like maybe just save up your money. money. They don't have any money, they have any income. Well, I'll say you can get a job, save up, and then take a year off. Yeah, he's this. gonna get a job doing what? With the face tattoos, I'm not sure. He could maybe, maybe be a carnival worker. Maybe. <sighs> He could probably run that hotel in John Wick. If he did anything that was like behind the scenes where he never had to interface with a client, he might be able to get by. You think he has any assassin skills? Mm. No. no. He has no <laughs> skills. <laughs> when you remake a video game, a lot of people get upset if you aren't true to the original, right? Christy, you know they completely redid all of the Spyro games? I know. I've played them. Oh, really? Not all of them, but I've, I've replayed one What's of them. What's your review on that? That was pretty good. I mean, it's it's literally the exact same. Like, the maps are all the same. Everything is the same. But, just better graphics. But graphically, much improved, right? Yeah. And it doesn't, now, like, burn your eyes after staring at it. When it, it so came much. to Spyro's proportions, were they the same? Roughly. He was a little less pointy. Yeah. Compared to the original PlayStation 1. Right. Higher polygon count, probably. Yeah. Well, definitely. Flame effects were nicer. No complaints there, but... Final Fantasy fans might have some complaints about this. Oh, they're remaking Final Fantasy VII, and Tifa's chest size has been reduced per a uh, Square Enix ethics department request. Here it comes. You ready? That's before. Boom. They were right there in your face. They're not that big. Very. I didn't uh, know this who this character was. Very pointy. Look at her comically oversized anime eyes. <laughs> also, to- toned down in the current version. I don't think those look reasonable. 
Yeah. 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 I mean, still she's generous. Wearing, she's wearing a sports bra, though, too. I mean, that's going to... Well, she's an athletic girl. Yeah. Well, that makes right. sense. I don't think this is that bad. A lot of people are upset. It's probably fine. If the worst thing you have to like worry about in your life is the size of some anime titties, can you, can you, you need to get over can you imagine? Yourself. Can you imagine being on the development team for Final Fantasy VII? It's like you're reimagining like this epic world of Final Fantasy VII, and all these fans are like super counting on you to do stuff. And then that email comes in, and it's like, or really, the one guy on the team, he's usually almost suicidal, but for the last two months, he's been like just on cloud nine. And he's got these giant boob renders all the time. And I come up and it's like, uh, listen, Steve, I got some real bad news. That's what I, just why does it matter? <laughs> why does it matter? What, what do you think is the audience here, Krista? Weebs? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of who's the audience. <laughs> who's the well, audience for this? I think, you know, Nintendo fans are ecstatic when they get cameos in other places for the Nintendo characters, right? Yeah. Get how I use the word ecstatic there? Uh. <laughs> I missed that, but that's pretty amazing. I thought I had to point it out. Ecstasy pills shaped like Wario have been seized in Japan. They're like Flintstone vitamins, but horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they probably They kind of look like it. It's like that same. I mean, they pretty good. Like somebody put a lot of work into that. Yeah. I mean, they made a mold. They made a mold. <laughs> They probably put a lot of work in the mold, and then they just, you know, did the so, thing. So, this guy was coming from Spain, and he had a lot of these. And then he went to his house, and he had some weed and stuff, too. So, with the Japanese laws, the drug laws... Oh, that's bad. We're never seeing him again. That's bad. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone forever. Was it worth it? Probably not. Mm. Probably, I kind of doubt it. He probably didn't even get to use them. He was just a mule. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, unfortunately... If you're thinking to yourself, God, I'd love to get some of that Wario ecstasy, you probably won't ever have a chance. I wonder if that's one of the defense mechanisms. Like, no one on Earth would bother making ecstasy look like Wario. I mean, surely. Yeah, but what else could you say it is? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you make Mario? Like some kind of, like, vitamins or something? There was Flintstones they do, vitamins. They do kind of look like, I think the, the picture looks like a vitamin. Well, it's a... Uh, it looks like a Flintstone vitamin. It's a... You make these with a pill press. Yeah. I know this because I watched the, uh, the documentary about this. Because you do pills. You buy <laughs> you buy the MDMA issue. as a powder form, and then I think there's like a binding agent or something mix, and you have your own pill press and you press them out. So, so there we learned. Do you think they taste like they? I bet they taste like that orangey tart flavor. I that don't Flintstone vitamins. No, I don't like. think I don't think you <laughs> let them dissolve in your mouth. I think you just swallow them, right? Flintstone vitamins, you bite, or I did. Well, X is different. No, I think they're about the same. <laughs> Can you imagine if they flavored it? Please, no engagement challenge. Someone probably will tell us in the comments. Like, actually. One, and one of the YouTube stories we mentioned, the people from YouTube were like, you know, we're going to experiment with hiding comments by default because those are genuinely terrible and we can't do anything about those. Look at this. 50 count bags. Crazy. Those are actually a pretty good size. Yeah, well, listen. When you see them in comparison. <laughs> That'd be a, a sizable vitamin. You want to get all that ecstasy in you all at once. Sort of crazy. I want, I want Flintstone vitamins now. They don't make those for adults. No one has ever crazy. You know, when I was young, uh, my mom got me Pac-Man vitamins. Oh. And those were, uh, first of all, the, you know what Pac-Man character they look like? The dots. They were just these big horse pills. And they tasted terrible. Did they have like that, like you bite into them and they were kind of like. Chalky. Chalky. Yeah, I like that. An orangey. Mmm. Well, why don't you just get sweet tarts? No, it's not the same. It doesn't have I, I all prefer the vitamin. The I buy gummy vitamins now. Can you, That's the only adult ones I can find you, that are appropriately childlike. If you eat a whole bottle of Flintstone vitamins, there's got to be a bad level of something you're putting in your body. You probably right? pee most of it out, but you might have some bad. Your kidneys side are just burst into flame. Really? Yeah, you'd get a stone. Uh, get yeah, it feels like somebody punched me in the kidney. That's your kidney crying for help. Yeah. Just have China take it out. All right, we squeezed 39 minutes out of that lemon. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. On a regular schedule. Bye. Maybe sitting down, maybe standing up. Engagement challenge. How do you feel about us standing up? Burp. We hate it.